What's going on everybody? My name is MT and welcome back to The Facts, a show where I just answer frequently asked questions that people have on the internet, even though nobody asked me to. And I think it is safe to say that we have all seen the new Captain America Civil War Super Bowl trailer. I mean, it had the chanting, it had the guns, it had the overprotective boyfriend, it had the face of shock that comes when a murderer with a metal hand tries to shoot you point blank in the face because you're a rich dickhead. But you block the bullet with your metal hand that you don't really need but can't afford the luxury of having because you're a rich dickhead. But my favorite part about that particular trailer was when the person in the skin tight black suit appeared at the side of my screen. Wait, no, no, not that one, though, admittedly. Th that was nice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marvel. I spent a lot of time during my trailer analysis on that frame alone, you know, so I could learn more about the butt, the plot, the plot, so I could learn more about the plot of the butt. I mean this ninja looking cat guy to the left, hanging out at the airport with killer white girl and the robo men as they prepare for the ultimate battle against two men, a witch, and the animal people. But who is ninja cat guy anyway? And where the hell did he come from? It feels like he came out of nowhere. To be honest, I would be surprised if you didn't have any idea as to who this guy was considering his name is in the title of this video. I mean, unless you're stupid. In that case, what? I just took off my thumb, son. Voodoo, voodoo. Ninja Cat Guy is actually Black Panther, who is actually a black dude by the name of T'Challa, who is actually the king of a small African nation called Wakanda. And when I say small African nation, most of you are probably thinking, ah! But, well, first of all, if you guys actually did think exactly that, congratulations. You're at least a little bit racist. But, second of all, Wakanda isn't your run-of-the-mill third world African nation, okay? And T'Challa is not your run-of-the-mill African king. And why do people say run-of-the-mill anyway? I don't even like running or mills. Because despite Africa's reputation for having struggling underdeveloped countries, Wakanda is anything but that. In fact, the nation of Wakanda, located in the middle of Nairobi, Uganda, Kenya, Somalia, and Ethiopia, is actually the richest and most technologically advanced nation on the whole planet, and has pretty much always been. Guys, if you guys think that Tony Stark's technology is cool, these guys were doing Tony Stark before Tony Stark was Tony Stark. I mean, hell, these guys were doing Tony Stark before Papa Stark was doing Mama Stark to make Tony Stark. And the reason for that is because Wakanda is ridiculously rich, and everybody in Wakanda is ridiculously smart. And because of that, Wakanda is known worldwide as the only nation in the world to never have been conquered in the history of ever. These guys were using science-based booby traps as early as the 5th century, and by the 19th century, when racist white dudes with muskets came to introduce Jesus to the region, Black Panther and the Wakandans introduced explosions to their faces. Wait one minute, MT. Did you just say that Black Panther was around during the 19th century, saving the world? That's impossible. Is he immortal or something? What an annoying voice I just did. That is a good question. No, he is not immortal, and no, he was not originally meant to be a superhero. The title of Black Panther was one that has been passed down from generation to generation from one leader of Wakanda to the next of royal lineage. You see, the Wakandan culture has always been centered around the Black Panther cult that worshipped Bast, the panther god. And it's been like that ever since the day a huge meteorite that was comprised of a strange buzzing material crash landed onto Wakandan territory a long, long time ago. And when that happened, the ancient Wakandans were like, oh my God, this rock fell out of the sky. It's buzzing. I cannot believe this. This must be a gift from the gods above. Mutuku, you have to come see this right now. Mutuku? <laughs> oh my god, Mutuku is a demon now. This is not how I thought my Thursday was going to go. Yup, that buzzing rock that fell out of the sky was actually vibranium, an extraterrestrial material that has the ability to absorb all sounds, vibrations, and kinetic energy that it comes in contact with. And apparently, it has the ability to turn some people into demons? Well, that's what the ancient old school Wakandans thought 
happened anyway. The real reason why these demon transformations were happening was because the vibranium, while being an excellent sponge for vibrations and stuff, was actually radiating a really intense mutagen in the area. So when some Wakandans started mutating into these really violent creatures, a Wakandan by the name of Bashenga said, this rock from the gods is cool and all, and it vibrates so it could very well save my marriage, but... We, we should probably contain this, so I'm I'm the captain now. And so, Bashanga became the world's first Black Panther and started the Black Panther cult so that they can keep these demons from spreading out into the world and so that they could protect their sacred mound of vibranium from curious outside people with grabby hands. And when Bashanga died, his son became the next Black Panther. And when he died, his son became the next Black Panther. And so on and so forth. And with that passing of time, the Wakandans grew and became smarter and smarter making scientific breakthroughs centuries before the world's most prominent scientists. These guys have the cure to cancer just chillin'. Just chillin' somewhere on a Wakandan shelf. But if you think that the funding for all of the nation's learning, research, and advancement just came to the Wakandans while they just sat on all that vibranium, you would be incorrect. Mm -mm, no, these are black folk, which means that the hustle game stay strong. Hashtag African hustle, hashtag money gang. Hashtag we selling vibranium out here on these streets, son. So years and years later, after that minor demon side effect thing died down, the Wakandans decided to start selling very small amounts of vibranium to outside buyers for ridiculously high prices, to the point where the exporting of vibranium alone was enough to financially support the high-tech futuristic utopia that Wakanda is today and then some. And fun fact, Wakanda is actually sitting right on top of a shitload of untouched oil that they could make billions of dollars off of, but don't touch because they don't have to. But actually, the real reason why the Wakandans are so stingy with all their vibranium is not because they want to make a quick buck. It's because they honestly feel that the rest of humanity is not mature enough to not be greedy, irresponsible, and violent with it. And they are right to feel that way because that is literally what everybody wants to do with the vibranium. To make the weapons, to make the wars, to make the monies. But as high tech and advanced as Wakanda has always been, very few people knew anything about about anything when it came to Wakanda because Wakanda kept all of their shit locked up tight. That is until my boy T'Challa took the crown, okay? Well, after his dad was brutally assassinated by a man named Ulysses Claw who wanted some of his vibranium. Also, Ulysses Claw is this guy from Avengers Age of Ultron. T'Challa is the son of T'Chaka, the former Black Panther and leader of Wakanda who was all about that keep those damn white folk off of my lawn isolationist mentality. And ever since T'Challa was a young boy, T'Chaka was training him in the art of combat because only the strongest of the strong will have the privilege of being the king of the country and the next Black Panther totem. And yes, like I said, the title of Black Panther is usually passed down from father to son. But but, in the interest of fairness, once a year, anybody can challenge the current Black Panther for his position on the throne, so no electoral college here. You just gotta know how to punch everybody in the face really good. But T'Challa ain't worried about anything like that because T'Challa is, hands down, the greatest Wakandan to ever punch a face in the history of the country, ever. This dude is a monster. He has mastered pretty much every form of martial arts there is in the Marvel Universe. Like whether it's armed or unarmed combat, T'Challa has learned and can execute every technique there freaking is. He's mastered every weapon known to man. He's an expert marksman. And boy, if he's looking for you, you better watch the fuck out. T'Challa's ability to track and hunt you down is second to none because he can pick up, track, and memorize thousands of individual scents. And since he's one of the world's greatest acrobatic gymnasts with unrivaled athletic ability and stealth skills that make ninjas look like one of those clapping monkeys with the symbols, if you are on this man's shit list, you could be dead right now and you probably wouldn't even know it. Like guys, I honestly don't think you understand. Black Panther is Marvel's most dangerous human being ever. Like this guy fought a guy twice his size for 13 hours and that was without the help of a ceremonial Black Panther vibranium mesh suit. And oh, I forgot to mention, in case you don't know what vibranium actually is, you know Captain America's shield? 
That's vibranium. So if Black Panther's suit is made out of the same near indestructible material that Captain America's shield is made out of, let's just say that Black Panther's health insurance policy is as useful as Bob Ross VHS tapes on Stevie Wonder's shelf. And since the Black Panther suit absorbs vibrations, T'Challa's stealth has stealth. Like one time, this dude infiltrated a city of highly trained ninjas unnoticed. Surprise, motherfucker. And with some help from the suit, T'Challa has been able to put a beat down on Captain America, Iron Man, Luke Cage, and the entire Fantastic Four. Nigga punched the devil in the face, like straight up in the face to the ground and had him begging for mercy like, T'Challa, please T'Challa, please. I, I, I got three kids, T'Challa. Please don't hit me again. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Captain America, Luke Cage, like MT, you can't tell me this guy isn't on some hardcore steroids, or at least at the very least, drinking the right flavor of Ensure, like, he's superhuman. Well, you're not completely off there, because in order to complete his training as Wakanda's next Black Panther, T'Challa had to eat a heart-shaped herb that basically enhanced his already beastly abilities to the next level. All right, hear me out for a second. You know how when it's 3 a.m. and you're in your bed and it's really dark and you really gotta pick your nose? You're not like, mm, where's my nose? Ah, damn it, my ah. Ah, get where? Nose? Can't see my nose? You know where your nose is at all times because of something called your kinesthetic sense. What this herb does, if and only if you have dedicated your life to becoming a peak human being, is increase the power of that sense times a million bajillion. So not only can T'Challa pick his nose in the dark without fear or doubt, he's also very comfortable with knowing where things are outside of his body, like the ledges of buildings should he need to leap to them, or bad guys lurking in the shadows should he need to murder them, like it's second nature, like he doesn't doubt himself because he knows where they are, he's spatially aware. And the herb also altered T'Challa's muscles and ligaments and whatnot. So so his strength, speed, agility, endurance, and overall healing were increased to like almost superhuman levels. But guys, the man caught an arrow that was thrown at him from behind. Like, what the f And why is this herb, as the children say, dank AF? <laughs> I learned that on the internet bar. Well, remember that vibranium demon radiation from before? Well, it also irradiated these plants and made them a meathead's wet dream. But, like I said before, this herb is not for everyone, okay? If you have not done enough push-ups or shake weights in your life, this thing will actually kill you. But T'Challa is not just all muscle, okay? He's actually the eighth smartest person in the entire Marvel Universe. And because his pops always taught him to be thousands of steps ahead of everybody else, he's also one of the world's leading tacticians. Guys, Black Panther is always prepared. Like, you know Galactus, that huge outer space guy that has a diet that consists of strictly planets? Yeah. He has contingency plans against Galactus in his desk. Just in his desk. He, he's ready for the end of the world. And the same thing goes for a variety of other people that he perceives as potential threats. Like Doctor Doom, the Silver Surfer, and... The Avengers? Yep, fun fact, Black Panther actually initially joined the Avengers just so he can spy on them, so he can assess their abilities and their weaknesses, so he could be prepared should he ever have to take them the f out. Which came in handy when he had to fight Iron Man that one time. So yeah, basically what I'm trying to say here is, T'Challa is more than qualified to lead Wakanda as its Black Panther, and technically, this is not even T'Challa's final form. As of right now in the comics, T'Challa is actually stronger and faster that he has ever been before due to the panther god giving him the combined abilities and knowledge of every single black panther that has ever lived as king of the dead but you know whatever right but anyways yeah when t'challa became king he decided to remove wakanda from the shadows and that the best way to protect his country was to venture out from outside of its borders and become a prominent political figure and to promote global peace and justice with all sorts of punches and kicks and murder with other heroes like the avengers and stuff so yeah i hope that answers your questions and proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that t'challa is the man. I honestly feel like I should make a separate video detailing all the awesome stuff that Black Panther has done in his life because people think that I'm insane when I say that Black Panther could probably beat Batman in a fight because 
He could. I mean, I could be wrong, and I know that speaking any ill thing about Batman on the internet is a death sentence, but after hours of research and analyzing the facts, that is the opinion fact that I have formed, so feel free to disagree, but at the end of the day, remember that all this is just comic books, and none of this actually matters, and I don't really care. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you haven't subscribed yet, to do it, or just leave a thumbs up, or share this video. That also makes me happy on the inside. My name is MT, and those were the facts, and if you didn't know, now you know. Catch you guys later. Surprise, motherfucker!